Hi, Jake. Uh, thanks for your question. So the way that we start this is we have to find the x values where each of the three lines intersect each other. So to do that, we would set them equal to each other and solve for x. So for the first two, we would say 2 over x equals 8x, then multiply x on both sides. 2 equals 8x squared. Good lord, squared. Okay, and then divide by 8. So 1 fourth equals x squared. So then x is plus or minus 1 half. Okay, so that's where the first two graphs will intersect each other, and that's important so that we can find like the scale of the graph. Okay, so that's the first two ones. The next two, let's do 8x and 1 eighth x. So set them equal to each other. 8x equals 1 eighth x. Okay, then multiply by 8 on both sides. 64x equals x. Okay. Uh, and then subtract x from both sides. So then we have 63x equals 0. Sorry, I keep looking away. I've got my notes on my whiteboard. Um, so if 63x equals 0, then x has to equal 0. Okay, so that's where those two graphs intersect. And then the last ones, we've got to do uh, the first guy and the last guy. Let's see. So here we go. The first guy and the last guy. So 2 over x equals 1 eighth x. Okay, so then multiply by x on both sides. So 2 equals 1 eighth x squared. Squared. Then multiply by 8 on both sides. So 16 equals x squared. So then x is plus or minus 4. Now this is important so that we can find how big our graph needs to be. So we know that the x axis has to be at least four in each direction because that's where those two intersect. So let's just, just keep those numbers in mind. Um, plus minus one half, zero, and plus minus four. Uh, I'm gonna erase everything, but remember those numbers. There's gotta be a faster way to do this. Look at that. Yeah, that's it. Okay. All right. So, all right. So we've got where they intersect. So now let's draw the coordinate plane. Okay. So we said that the first and the last graph intersect at plus and minus four. So we're going to want at least four in each direction. Okay, and the other ones intersect at zero and then plus minus one half. So I'm gonna put those points on the graph. Okay. So plus minus one half. Zero and plus minus four. Okay, that kind of just gives us a scope for how big our answer is gonna be. All right, next thing. So now let's graph the actual lines. So the first one, two over x. You can graph this one by thinking through what it means. So what it means is that for any x you plug in, you just divide that from two and that's your y. So if we plug in one, y is gonna be two over one, which is two. So we have the point one, two on the graph. One, two. A tiny blue dot, okay. And then try another one. If we plug in x equals two, then y equals two over two, which is one. So we have the point two, one on the graph. Okay, now let's try something else. If we plug in one half, we get y equals two, divided by one half, which is the same as two times two. So we have the point one half four on the graph. 
All right, and then if you follow the curve of these three dots, it's going to end up looking like this. Okay, now what if we plug in negative 1? Then we have y equals 2 divided by negative 1, which is negative 2. So basically, what this first guy is going to look like is this same curve that's in the first quadrant reflected over the x-axis, or the over the origin. So, all right, that's your first graph. That is y equals 2 over x. For the next one, y equals 8x. This one's a little bit easier because it's, um, it's just a line with a slope of 8 and a y-intercept of 0. So we know that it hits at 0, 0, and then it would go up 8 over 1. But because we don't have 8 on the y direction, we can just go up 4 over 1 half, which would be the same thing. You see this graph intersects that one right above this red point, just like we suspected it would. So the second guy looks like this, roughly. It's not a straight line, but it looks like that. OK, the last one, 1 8 x, same thing. It has a y-intercept of 0, but a slope of 1 8. So that means that for this one, we would go up 1 over 8. But again, we, it's not, our graph isn't that big, so we have to go up one half over four. So we have zero, zero, and then up one half over four, right above that red dot, right where we thought that they would intersect, they do. So then if you connect, whoops, that little dip shouldn't be there. But if you connect, keep going like that, boom, okay. And the last thing, x is greater than zero. So we're only looking at things on this side of the y-axis. So we're ignoring this part, even though there is a region enclosed there. That's where x is less than 0, so we ignore it. So your final answer is this region right here. All right, sorry for the super long answer. There you go. Hope that helped.